Welcome to Japan Spirit. I'm Takashi Kawatani. And I'm Itadia. Since the last、uh, 20 years, triggered by bubble burst, Japan has been grappling not only with a stagnant economy, but also、uh, uh, weakening self confidence, national pride, and morality. However, I would argue it would be、uh, egocentric to blame global economy or Western influence because both have been indispensable for Japan's development. More important will be Japan's cultural power to digest and Japanese foreign cultures has deteriorated. Isn't that our own choice, our own fault,、uh, which our own greed or whatever has invited?、Uh, we should take responsibility for what we have done to this country, hence Japan Spirit program. At this juncture, it will be enlightening to turn to our democratic friend India、uh, for our insight for Japan. Uh, where much of our national or spiritual roots come from. Today, we are very pleased to give you a special dialogue with Dr. Srilalita Sagi. Dr. Sagi is Assistant Professor of Organizational Behavior and Japanese Management Systems at Gandhi Institute of Technology and Management, popularly known as GITAM, one of the top ranking u n i v e r s i t i e s in Andhra Pradesh, India. Facing a fascinating Bengal Bay. Hello, Dr. Sagi. How are you? Very fine. How are you? Fine. Welcome to Japan Spirit. Thank you.、Yeah. You are my first guest from India. <laughs> okay.、Uh, India has surfaced as a powerful global、uh, business player in many industries,、uh, not only IT, pharmaceutical. But also going into、uh, manufacturing. I'm sure that India is feeling growing pains at, at all levels.、Uh, yes, it is picking up. It has the、uh, power to, to do many more jobs.、Mm. And it's, it's revisiting so many industries. It's changing. And it has got the youth, younger generation, and most of the population is the plus. So, India is speaking.、Uh, of course, it has got、uh, growing pains、mm -hmm. to work on, but definitely it's picking up on so many issues of industries.、Mm -hmm. It's a very positive phase.、Uh, in Japan, there are alarming cases every day in the, in the newspaper、uh, but that, that symbolize the disintegration, the weakening of national pride,、uh, morality, psychological balance, and so forth.、Uh, could you share with us some of the, some of the Painful ex examples that you must be going through. Yeah, it is,、uh, it is a phenomenon everywhere. The younger generation needs more motivation、mm. and more hand to hold and monitoring. They need kind of mentors. And in some cases,、uh, some of the Indian students, Indian younger generation, also some of the painful incidents. But、uh, that, is the, that is the growing population.、Mm -hmm. Society always at charge, and、uh, every society will go through the same,、mm -hmm. certain kind of difficulties. Okay, sure. In managing、uh, such growing pains,、uh, I want to talk about your religious、uh, power.、Uh, is India's 3,000 year old religious power? To digest alien religions and cultures or even invasions, do you think it is helping to, for、uh, Indian people to retain your spiritual balance? Yes, definitely. That's a very good point. Uh, Indian uh, spiritual, uh, philosophical, religion orientation is Vasudhaika Kutumbam. The world is one family. The world is one family. Yes.、Okay. You should treat the world as one single family. Uh, in Sanskrit, it is called Vasudhaika Kutumbam.、Uh -huh. So, allow everyone, you live alone, you coexist, you help each other.、Hmm. It is complementary but not competition. So, that、uh -huh. is what is helping Indian roots. Nevertheless,、uh -huh. there are difficult situations when you accept so many things into your country, but the roots are very strong, and that is what is being re looked at、mm, the, by the social s y s t e m That's、yeah. very, very interesting. Very interesting. The motto of India is the famous unity in diversity.、Yes. Um, and its credit, credit could be given to Hinduism for its inclusiveness of diversity.、Yes. Uh, Japan has Shinto, which is also the faith of、uh, inclusiveness. 
do you see any similarities between Hinduism and uh, Shintoism? And this question I'm asking because I know you studied the research in, uh, uh, where was it? Nishi, no, no, Shirakawa. I mean, uh, Shirakawa, uh, which yeah. prefecture was it? Gifu prefecture. Gifu can, uh, for three years in Japan. Would, would there be any similarities between the two? Yeah, I see similarities at the roots mm. from Indian Hinduism and also Shintoism uh, because uh, even in Shintoism I've seen uh, praying the trees, you know, all the five elements, mm -hmm. water, soil, fire, and same is the case with India. And it's more near to nature, respect the nature, and uh, pay attention and pray the nature to give us the, the good life to live on this earth. So I've seen the same similarities in Shintoism also. Oh. So it's like Kamisama mm -hmm. of Japan and is the same God in Hinduism. Living in harmony with nature? Yes. Ah. In one of our, one of our re uh, last programs, we, we featured about the uh, Japanese concept of nature. So. I think you spoke about uh, similar terminologies. There's a uh, moving on a little bit to uh, business relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank you very much for buying a Japanese uh, high-speed railway <laughs> facilities near your Mumbai yeah, area. Nice. That's very good. There's no doubt that the Japan and India will continue to deepen economic ties thanks to the Modi-nomics or Abenomics. Uh, to, what, to, to what extent is it really possible for Japan to collaborate with your country culturally, given the enormous differences between our, between our, our countries? Yeah. Uh, culturally, if you see the roots, maybe uh, on the face of it, apparently it is different, but uh, more of a Buddhism, uh, more of a Shintoism orientation. Mm -hmm. We respect each other. And there are some very strong uh, cultural roots connected to Japan and India. Oh. Our culture, yeah, we can learn a lot. And uh, that, that helps both of us. Uh, other than the respect and the work culture, would there be any other areas for, for cultural uh, similarities? Cultural similarities yeah. like family and the, the elder person of the family is respected. And in the work culture also, the boss is respected. So respect for elders and hierarchy and uh, taking the orders from the senior is more important. Harmony in the society is very important. These are very similarities of the culture. Of course, technologically, we need a lot of support from Japan. And uh, the advancement of the technology definitely uh, Japan can help a lot to India. How about the, the rice culture? Yes, that's a very important. Rice bowl, uh, the rice culture is very important to India because uh, India also uh, praise God. It's like a, a very important aspect of society that you have festivals of rice, mm -hmm. harvest festivals. So you say that God has blessed us with the rice. So please do not waste the Rice. And uh, like one word like itadakimasu in Japan is the same thing in India also. I received my food for day. So you respect the rice which comes into your plate for the day and you work hard and that's very important for the society. That's Indian, uh, very rooted culture of India. The core of Japanese values is uh, wa or harmony. And uh, it's been the uh, building block of Japan as you know. Would there be, what would be the such core values of, of, of India? Yeah, uh, wa equal to harmony with family or society is equal to in, in India is sang, S-A-N-G-H, sang, sang, means society, yes. One has to live in society with harmony. One has to be uh, friendly, respecting each other, helping each other understanding each other in society is one of the important because it's group oriented. It is a group oriented culture. So group has to accept you. Group will help you and it is complementary for a, any individual okay. to be part of the group. So we respect the group. Yeah. One cannot live without the group in India. All right, all right. So is the case with uh, uh, Japan. Okay. You have to live in the group. 
Dr. Sagi, I'd like to um, make some uh, quotation from uh, uh, former Indian ambassador to Japan, as well as he was a professor attached to Keio University, Global Security Center. The book is titled, If an Elephant Loses Weight, It Is Still an Elephant. Uh, this man is a famous Mr. Aftab Seth, a former Indian uh, ambassador to Japan. Let me quote, and I'd like to invite your comments about that, if you don't mind. Sure. Right. Sure. Apart from the constant striving for perfection, the Japanese also have a great ability to sacrifice, and this is really the essence of Bushido, the way of the warrior. While Bushido has, in some quarters, been seen as a concept representing an aggressive samurai or World War, Second World War type of Japanese soldiers, in essence, Bushido is not dissimilar from the concept of Kama Yoga. Both the Kama Yogi and the Bushido followers are uh, exhorted to carry out their duties sincerely without any thought of self and without any eye on reward. Is it possible to make some Comments, Doctor. Yes, yes. Um, from taking from the note of the Bushido and Karma Yogi, Karma Yogi is also selfless, working for the society, working for the group, working with the responsibility to do some work to help for any difficult situation. A Karma Yogi is one who's on to the duty, is a duty bound. I think similar for the uh, Bushido also. Oh. It's a very good quote. I have enjoyed it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, this quotation reminds me of uh, uh, of my recent uh, cross-cultural management seminar I have conducted in Tokyo the other day. Okay. This Japanese, soon to be expatriate to India, told mm -hmm. me that it's very. It is the most easiest to communicate with Indian Indian people compared to other agents in in ASEAN. And I, I asked him, why do you think so? Indians, India seems to be very difficult to communicate because of language, uh, debating skills, and so forth. He said, Indian people do not hide things in their heart. Yes. You know? So once you open your heart, they are already open, so communication yes. is instant. To me, that, that was a surprising uh, insight. This young man uh, taught me the other day. What yes. do you think? What do you yeah, think? This is very, 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 inter very interesting. Yeah? Because it's very expressive. Ah. It's very emotional. Culture is very emotional bounded. Mm -hmm. We express a lot okay. and we don't hide. So it also helps the language that you speak. Mm -hmm. So Hindi mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any Indian language, it is more expression oriented mm -hmm. than so, uh, right. hiding. So as long as the mm -hmm. Japanese learn how to argue, then we'll be uh, perfect partners. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yep. Well, uh, Dr. Sagi, time is always uh, too short to cover the huge subject, but uh, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you, uh, to have you in, in our studio by Skype, and I wish you all the best. And if you ever have a chance to visit Tokyo, please try to visit us. Thank you. Yeah, please visit to India also. Thanks. Yes, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Okay, so how was today's uh, dialogue? I think it's very, it was very interesting because I never thought Dr. Sagi will mention Bushido. Mm -hmm. You know, Japan and India and the country around India is very physically far, but it's closely connected spiritually. And I, I think that's, that's really interesting. Uh, before we uh, wrap up today's dialogue, I would like to show you a latter part of the a quotation from the same book about the elephant uh, by former ambassador. The social ethic of Japan, uh, deeply influenced by Bushido, blends virtues that might at first glance appear contradictory, values such as loyalty, sincerity, harmony, and sacrifice. But these apparently contradictory values are blended into a harmonious whole to build up a society that works for the family, the group, the company, or the country. This typically Japan spirit gives me the confidence that this nation before too long will be able to overcome its difficulties and build a bright future for itself. So today I consider it's quite lucky to have a person like Dr. Sagi to share, to hear her insights for Japan. 
Uh, today we have turned to our democratic friend India for insights for Japan's future. And a friend in need is a friend indeed. And that's Japan's spirit. Until next time. Bye. Bye.